hello from new york where the first senior level meeting of um, the global partnership for effective development cooperation took place at the un united nations headquarters today and yesterday and this slm as it is known will actually help in the implementation of agenda 2030 in the next 10 years today we are very fortunate to have with us emily due to to raga am i pronouncing it correctly uh, who is former co-chair of cpde that is cso partnership for development effect uh, for CSO. Uh, CSO partnership, partnership for development, development effectiveness, effectiveness. and uh, she is also executive director of uh, uh, the PES, uh, the apiango that is uh, pacific uh, islands association. Uh, um, association of ngos um, and uh, she really represents i think the woman power of the pacific uh, emily uh, what is the role and importance of inclusive partnerships uh, for sustainable development i would say it's the heart and soul uh, of sustainable development um it's not possible um to have a uh, sustainable development sustainable development meaning uh, development that matters to people without inclusive partnerships and 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 what we mean by that is that Uh, we're not leaving anyone behind which is the ambition of course of the uh, agenda 2030 and the sustainable development goals um so yes it's front and center and uh, and we're very focused uh, cpde uh, civil society at the country uh, at the national at the subnational level um we're holding this up as um one of the significant commitments particularly of the busan partnership mm-hmm. the last high level forum on aid and development effectiveness it's one of the uh, four principles um of of effective development cooperation uh, could you say uh, define a little bit more about what is inclusive partnership for the person on the at the ground what does inclusive partnership mean inclusive uh, partnership well it's it's about involving everyone um and of course the agenda 2030 talks about not leaving anyone behind so when we you know at the village level for an example like come from the pacific uh when we talking about inclusiveness we um understand that in traditional settings normally women do not speak normally younger people do not speak so what it means is that we have to in respecting the culture in respecting the context find other ways and other means so that everybody in that in in that community get to know about what's being talked about that we find ways that they're involved in decision making um and and ultimately particularly because development cooperation is about governments and and um the the types of programs and the types of uh projects the types of activities it it essentially it's about benefits for all we have to make sure that um development funding we have to make sure that government funding uh, benefits all and not just some okay so but so they are important <coughs> excuse me but are they becoming a flickering flame and what was agreed upon initially uh, in the busan uh, declaration are we anywhere near to it or are we moving away from it i coined the term yes, um you, you know the busan commitments uh were a flickering flame and that was 2 years after busan we are you know into the 2030 agenda we are halfway between busan and 2030 and unfortunately the evidence shows that there has been little progress So my my question that I've asked in the last couple of days is you know is is it even an elusive dream but but I'd like to I'd like to say and I I think it's 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 uh, probably more um I, I think it's better to to say that it's it's a work in progress there definitely has been a lot of inclusion uh of civil society um of local government um 
But the issue is whether that's meaningful and whether that's effective. And I think we need to work harder. And, and I think the evidence also tells us that even when civil society is at the table or involved in decision making, the quality of our engagement is not as high as it should be. So there's quite a bit of work to do there. Uh, any best practice example which comes to your mind? <coughs> Anywhere where you find there has been improvement? Well, you know, we've uh, worked across uh, the Pacific. Um, and, and I think, um, I th I think the, the gender um, and in the women's uh, area, but mind you, you know, there, there have been a, a lot of um, work, and, uh, and that's because um, uh, advocates for, for gender equality, um, women's empowerment have been around longest. Um, and, and in lots of ways, um, there has been a lot of um, structures, a lot of, I mean, I think now, even this morning at the um, senior level meeting, uh, all the, the, the co-chairs were men and, and we had the, yes. the new chair actually say yes. out, of his, uh, out of his own mm -hmm. initiative, mm -hmm. well, I think one of the issues that we need to work on because all of us in the, in the room were looking and going like, okay, you know, they're all men. So I think there's a greater consciousness. Um, I'd also like to, to think that that is now beginning to be the case with civil society. Um, I think there is a greater consciousness, but, but I think what we're talking about is that um, civil society um, or, or people in the communities uh, not, need not just be consulted, but they need to be involved in decision making. And we've seen that in the Pacific, where I come from. I think that's been the case in Asia as well. We see it in the UN. I think the UN is a classic example where there are now structured systems for NGOs to be in the room, in the General Assembly, to make our voices heard. But is that making a difference? That's the question that still has to be seen. I mean, as far as the gender part goes, I think uh, CPD deserves a pat on the back. At the CSO forum, there were more women than men. So, <laughs> so I think that is something um, to be proud of. Uh, what role, Emily, do you think and uh, what greater role can the civil society organizations play to make partnerships transformational rather than transactional? I'd like to think, and you know, I've been leading um, a regional civil society platform for the last 10 years. Um, I'd like to think that um, in today's uh, date and, and in, in the 21st century, um, civil society uh, is now, we now have greater access to, to places uh, and meetings that we've not had before. And I think we also carry with that a greater responsibility to bring voices to the table. Um, when, when I use the word transactional, um, it is about uh, civil society being used as implementers of projects, um, as conduits for, go for donor agenda, as, as an adage to, to, to government programs. No, the Busan Partnership um, talked about respecting uh, and recognizing and accepting civil society as development actors in our own right. So I think for those of us in CPDE and members of CPDE that now have access to policy dialogue, policy places, I think we can leverage of that and use our voice to give more attention, particularly to what is needed at the national and at the community level, because that's where the real transformation happens. So I think civil society, it's only civil society, and I think it's been said here time and time again, without civil society, we are not going to achieve the SDGs and we're not going to implement. So I think recognizing the critical role that we play, recognizing the reach that we have, I think that uh, we can take it upon ourselves um, to bring about a, a lot of the changes and also have access for those who don't have access. Okay, but uh, and still uh, there is a lot of talk going on about civil society being under threat all the time and that threat uh, increasing, becoming increasingly more. So what do you have to say on that? That's also the evidence that has come back from the uh, monitoring report 
Um, so since Busan, there has been three rounds of uh, monitoring uh, the Busan indicators, and there is an indicator that's specifically to do with enabling environment. The evidence is that um, s um, th there is shrinking space for civil society, meaning civil society are being um, jailed, civil society are being harassed, civil society leaders are being killed, and um, this is a great concern because, of course, we cannot be effective if the environment within which we operate. And so um, there's been a, a Belgrade uh, call to action. Uh, we were uh, recently uh, all in um, at, the, at the last International Civil Society Week, and uh, we will be pleading with the United Nations Secretary General to bring this to the attention of the United Nations because the very governments that have promised, made promises and commitments in Busan mm -hmm. are the same governments mm -hmm. that are shutting down spaces for civil society. So we have to lobby very hard. We have to um, work very hard to bring this to the attention of the United Nations. Thank you very much, Emily. Uh, we were in conversation with Emily Duturaga, former co-chair of CPTE. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So we have, uh, do you have a Facebook?